day. Uh, All right, welcome back to another episode of Road to William. I got my cousin here from Abby Ball and Basketball Show, Ashley. Say what up, Ash. What up? It's your girl, Ashley Abby Ballin. Yeah, about to do this review with my cuz. We always we love movies, and so we review them, yo. Yep. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Repping the WNBA, baby. Ay. Don't want to see my background. Oh, I didn't know it was a, uh, what's the name? They got a show now, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, I checked out the first episode. It was okay. Maybe the second episode will be better. I'm just pick Wikipedia. Like I said, Wikipedia be the best. All right. <laughs> Story Ave. Story Ave is a 2023 American drama film directed by Aristotle Torres from a script by Torres and by Sue Thompson. Okay, it's all these people. Okay, okay. It is based on Torres' 2018 short film of the same name, which in turn was based on a true story. There ain't nobody to tell what it says. <laughs> Whatever. What, you know? what, what are you trying to say? find out. No, I was just gonna read like someone written it, you know what I mean, as a script but we're gonna watch the trailer first and then we're gonna dive into it. Yo, when you gonna start letting me rep and throw the letters up? Trying to pull to the crew. It's about this life. Get back, son. Give me your money. I know it's thick up, kids, man. You got one of them. I'll shoot your ass. Give me your money. No. You got some mad skills then. Kadir's got serious raw talent. Talent alone doesn't make you a college candidate. Which gallery are you in? No gallery. Flexing the streets. We pull this off the coup automatics. I didn't know you were in a graph gang ran by a guy named Schemes. It's more like a family. We need you on this one, kid. Don't disappoint me, all right? <laughs> you know. Now, before you go and do anything stupid with that money, ask yourself, how much of your problems are your fault? Yeah, we're gonna get right into it. Basically, I liked I liked the film a lot. I didn't really know what to expect, but I love that. Uh, I love the story. I love the mom in it. You already know from Bel Air. Everyone had a story, even if it was a little bit. Even we got a snippet. You kind of got a glimpse of who they were. You know what I mean? Even even the mom's boyfriend, like. At first, I'm like, oh, is he one of them typical stepdads? But, like, when he kept talking a little bit more, you're like, oh, he's just like that. He's just like that annoying dad. Like, <laughs> he, he, But, like, he's a stepdad, so it's, like, more annoying. But but I, I think, and it was stressing me out the whole film, and we're going to dive into that later. But when the, the bathroom, where it's, like, water is coming out, I'm like, what's happening? Like... It, it that was that those scenes gave me chills like because it kept like more anticipation people like blaming blaming Kadir about it and it was a it was I think a really good film I enjoyed that um I mean I, I'm glad that it wasn't a typical film like like that scene like story Av this scene could have like you were expecting you know what I thought from this scene I'm like he's gonna go to jail because he gonna kill this man and then like <laughs> wrapped around how he should have 
understand how to how he got to this point. I thought this was going to be like the end all be all. And this was like really like the beginning of him like maturing and finding himself. And I'm like, that's actually wild. Um, and I love how even though in that moment he was startled, the guy was start uh, Louise was startled. Mm-hmm. He still was, he wasn't cocky though. He wasn't like, you're not gonna, sh-. he was like, you're not, I know you're not gonna do it. He wasn't cocky about it. And it was like, you sh- you ought to thank God it was someone like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Rob, <laughs> you know what I mean? And even going down the steps after that scene, the cops are just swarming the area just cause. And they know he works for the city, so they're like, well, who is, we don't never see you with him. <laughs> who is that? You okay? He's like, everything's fine. <laughs> like, how everything could escalate in a moment. This film just kept showing you that, like, in a moment, things could, could like, switch. Even down to Luis passing, like, we saw him, then we didn't. There was no goodbyes it was and now you have to deal with that yeah go ahead let me know how you felt about the film overall in your uh, it was a great coming of age story it had a lot of drama there was some scenes that made me teary-eyed uh there was some uh parts that was sad some were like i guess it's sort of uh the norm for like a lot of black kids you know Here's a kid who has some talent, you know, of drawing, and he's trying to, he has some trauma, right? And, but he's, he has the wrong crowd, the graffiti gang, OTL, and then they have like this war and beef against another gang, VHS. So he's trying Melvin Gregg, who's the actor that played Scheme, it's actually like Scheme versus um, Gomez's character, because it's like, which, you know, mentor are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the one from the game, or are you going to choose this Gomez who is trying to help you um, and turn your life around and use your talent for good um, and trying to get you further in life oh and um the the shy kid he was in there Alex he played his friend Mo and I was like I sort of thought Mo was like a bad influence as well but then after he got jumped he started um being a good influence to Kadir like yo all you gotta do is write this essay to get out of here you know to college you gotta go do it (laughs) <laughs> you know, uh, Mo was uh, Skeen's little brother. Uh, but I liked the film. It was good because I do like um, films that show like um, your teenage years, but you're transitioning to an adulthood as well. The scenes where I wasn't necessarily like scared with those scenes. Um, like the water scenes, like when he would describe it, I guess I got teary eyed. Oh, and the scene with him and his mother, and he was like, yeah, blame me. I got teary eyed about that. And she was like, and you kind of learned what the mother was going through a little bit. She has depression for losing, you know, her child. You kind of learn more about it. He was looking after his little brother that has cerebral palsy. Um, and somehow the door got locked and, you know, he drowned. And so it's like, was it his fault? Does it matter whose fault it is? Somebody still died, you know, that was close to you. And he's always drawing him in his book. That was dope. Um, oh, and the guy who played Kadir, I should have mentioned it. He was, um, in that Netflix movie, um, When They See Us, he, and he was actually really young when that happened. So I was like, oh, he got another role. He's doing pretty good. Um, so overall, the actors were great. I can't, I'm going to give it, because there was some scenes that was like kind of dull, like you could be on your phone, kind of dull. But <laughs> overall, I think the 
the actors are the ones that really made it real because I think every emotion, whether it was anger or sadness or just getting to know each other, like the Gomez and Kadir, you know, relationship, that was dope because Story Avenue, the the movie is called Story Avenue, right? They meet at Story Avenue, right? That's where his the interaction happened. But it's also kind of like, you know, which avenue are you going to choose? What's your story is going to be like, you know? So it kind of has multiple meanings to it. And I like that part. The title was great. Yeah, even the Gomez character was going through his stuff. He lost a child. So it was like about death and uh, and like, what are you going to do with your life and it was, you got to watch something happy afterwards, <laughs> you know, definitely, definitely. But I think the actors made the movie. That was a good reference you made to the, like, which mentor should you choose? So, yeah, like, which mentor are you choosing in life? Because to me, I felt like Schemes at first seemed like um a good role model. It was until, like, Kadir needed his help, like, and you never know how somebody is gonna, he kind of, like, switched up on him, like, when he wanted to be real more serious in their gang and stuff like that, like, you could tell if he started changing, like, he ain't just like that homie, that big homie you see him as, now, like, oh, you want to work with us? Okay, so the relationship is about to change, but I don't think Kadir realized that it was gonna go like that, <clears throat> um, and I felt like if they didn't mix business and all that with, with like, street stuff, I felt like they he could have still been a good role model to him. But, be, you know, but in the end, like, <clears throat> Kadir kind of got lucky with, like, the people that was placed in his life. Like, the person he robbed, he got lucky. And then, like, the even the guy who, any other dude, like that other gang, if it would he would have been joined that one, they would have killed him. They would. They didn't. <laughs> you're just another boom. We don't care. But yeah. even though he was technically supposed to be the evil or whatnot, the opposite, like he to me was kind of like the um, what was his name from Black Panther, the other one, who Michael B. Jordan played, Killmonger. Oh yeah, Killmonger. Yeah. Like he was more of like a Killmonger character in terms of like you understand why he's is the way he is and he's really intelligent like even people around the way like might talk crap about him but they still gonna be like but he is brilliant like the little asshole at the art gallery we're gonna get to him we're gonna get to him <laughs> we're gonna get to him <laughs> but but i felt like even he could have got a worse mentor than that and it's just like in the end he let him go he was like no are you gonna get hit don't just don't cross my path we don't, you know what I mean? So I felt like he got really lucky with that. But even the girl back, like, Scheme's girlfriend, when she was looking at him like, you got these kids running around here, like, doing work. <laughs> what you mean, why am I upset? <laughs> they got a little baby? <laughs> and so he's, like, not fully understanding that you can do something else. But something had to have happened. I, maybe they should do, like, a movie about him too because it's like well if he might have had a chance in life but something crushed him he's like the jukebox of the story like it's like we all, we saw we we still confused the how jukebox is in a singing group being su successful to jukebox where Kanan had to take her out you feel me like and it's like mm -hmm. how did even y'all get to that point because y'all's tight so it feels like I feel like for schemes it's like we need we need backstory on him of how he could have been one of the greats and whatnot like but something happened in his life you know what I mean but um I don't know like what you said oh the glorious scenes um I feel like they had to put a little love in there I'm like I'm glad it's not a love story though I also didn't want that uh, I like how it was a mixture of different things. It was about family. It was about love. It was about friendship. You know, it was about finding yourself. It was a little bit about everything. And 
Gloria, um, you could tell she was kind of like in the shadows. And that's what Kadir was talking about, like in that room, in that, uh, in a room or in that the red photo, room. The photo room, oh, yeah. Like you hiding behind, you're hiding behind your own work because of who you're with. And that's another point, like, Depend who you're with is going to determine how how far you go in life, how far you are like in touch with yourself. Like if your partner isn't allowing you to really be your full self, of course your artwork, the thing you think you're like expressing, it it seems like uh, something's missing. You know what I mean? So it's just like Kadir wasn't afraid to like show the rawness of you know, like you said, he was drawing his brother, like, that's as raw as it's gonna get, you know what I mean, like, you're drawing buildings, like, I'm drawing my brother, <laughs> like, 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 when she said she was a photographer, I was like, I hate when people say that nowadays, like, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you are not, I get real picky about stuff like that, okay, you <laughs> talking about she was well he was like well how what kind of pictures you take landscape <sighs> what, what? <laughs> <sighs> anyway um but yeah he was the boyfriend was annoying because it was just like oh and then she was like oh hopefully they'll buy some of my stuff what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> they don't, like in anyways but the mother relationship he, Kadir had, I love that. I love how they sat down and just kept it raw and just talked like, look. And then when he said, y'all blamed me, I like how she didn't back out of it. I'm glad she was like, you're right. Like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Are you going to be this honest with Philip? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when is Valet coming back? They're coming back soon too. I think they're in March as well. Or I think they come out. They be random, but they are coming back. Um, cause they're starting to post more. I'm like, okay. Did I'm gonna show you? Uh, did you watch uh, Coco Jones? She got an interview with uh Ellie L or some magazine. I'm gonna send it. It's no. hilarious. Anyway, but I love overall. I love the film. Love the characters. The games like he proved himself to me again because I remember him in. It was this one movie. The first movie I seen him in was like Nine Perfect Strangers or something like that. That was a really good one. But then he let me down with House Party. I was like, bro, what's going on? So he brought me himself back with this. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know he was in House Party. You think we should review House Party? Yeah. <laughs> that ain't even worth the review, man. I'm seeing if we missing anybody. Everybody was good. I enjoyed everybody. Yeah, yeah. I like the uh, Alex Hibbert. He was in uh, the new uh, yeah. Good Burger movie. I still got to see that. I just watched the Keenan. I mean, yeah, his name Keenan. He was on The Breakfast Club today. Oh, about yeah. his journey. I know he got a Hollywood star. And Charlie Wilson. But yeah, thanks for coming on the show. We're going to wrap it up. Just wanted to give y'all a little snippet. If you haven't seen the movie Story Avenue, Definitely recommend five out of five stars. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, what do you rate it? Because you said some scenes was boring. Yeah, it wasn't the perfect coming of age film, but I'm going to give it four. The perfect film, go check out this old film called Fresh. Oh, uh, oh we got to review Fresh. It Samuel got Jackson in that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so stir it up, stir it up. if you haven't subscribed to my cousin's channel, you should. If you're really into sports, go ahead. If you're really into anything sports related, like she reviews uh sports shows, people get interviewed by sports players. Um, you should do another uh, Kevin, the Kevin Hart one where he be they be like in the ice. Buckets. Oh yeah, I love it. I love that. Cold as balls. That's funny. Go check that out too. I got some more videos coming about the WNBA doc that just got on Tubi called Shattering Glass. I'm gonna um review that. Okay. I'm gonna review Giannis's uh Ooh. documentary called Ugu. Yeah. When that come out? That's already out. It's on oh, Prime okay. Video. What's app? 
And it's on YouTube, too. Yeah, she didn't want to watch it. <laughs> I still got to watch the Candace Parker one and watch that one from yours. Oh, yeah, that was a good doc. I got I got a, um, Nissa never seen The Blackening. So we got really? that. It's on Hulu, I think. I Just think The Blackening is on your app. Yeah, I saw that by myself. Sometimes I the mu- movies by myself. It's on stars. Oh, yeah, that's where I seen it. I was like, where did I see that? I gotta watch Abbott what Elementary you know? back. Oh, yes, I'm so excited. Funny. We gotta rewatch those, too. But they I get on my nerves. They acting like they don't like each other. Like, bro, y'all are getting on my nerves. Yeah, like, just date already. They nervous. So like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave love in the comments. Tell us your favorite part of the film. If you haven't seen it, why not? Go share this with all the people in the movie. They're like, what? <laughs> Shout out to Bronx. Filmed uh, Bronx. Great scenery and imagery, you know. Great graffiti, did, great drawings. Yeah, whoever did the drawings, I don't know who was involved in that. That was amazing. Even at the end where it was both Louise and his little brother, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, man, that was a really good one. What do you want to say to the peeps? Where do you get your merch from? Do, should, do you got merch coming? You got merch coming? I think I'm going to start getting merch ready. <laughs> I mean, if I had some money, I would, you know, get some, I'd be balling t-shirts and hats and sell them online, you know. Shout out, shout, shout out who made your hat. Shout out to Tasha K. Brand Spurt. MKE. Yeah, you know, if I knew people would buy some shirts, I would get some made, you know, you know. I got one extra one, it's medium. Or is it large? You know? Subscribe over to our channel, say, I want a t-shirt. That's yours. Yeah, Ashley, I be balling. <laughs> Check out my social media platforms. Also, I just made a Twitch. Also, go subscribe hey. I be balling basketball show. We on Twitch, y'all. I'm going to be on later. And sometimes, you know me, I be smoked. Sometimes I be doing a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, somebody's always watching. And I don't know if it's, like, an automatic, like, mod. I don't know how Twitch works. There's always one person. I know. I'm like, this is a little strange. It's like... One time it was two, and I'm like, oh, that's because you're on. But before you even knew I had a channel, it was just one person. And I'm like, what's going on? So I just be like, whatever. But sometimes I'm just sitting there because I'm like, you know, making food or I'm smoking. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I was like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> you're just standing there. I see texts and sometimes, but I'd be so in the zone of whatever I'm doing that I'd be like, I'm going to get to them soon. And then I'm like, I know Ashley is like, what in the hell is going on? I'd just be in the zone. And then I really, yeah, I'd just be eating. I'd be like, oh, I'm hungry. Because they'd be taking forever with the heist. People be leaving the lobby. You got to wait till it's all four people if you're doing a heist. Oh, it's, yeah. It's like a whole... <laughs> It's a whole thing. You'd be sitting there for like a good 20 minutes to see if people want to play. So I'm like, I'm not just going to sit here and look and <laughs> hear this music. I'm about to go and like make food or maybe take a shower because by the time I get out of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> take that long? <laughs> One time me and, Mel, me and Mel were playing and I like, I started like cutting my hair. I started lining my hair up. I'm like, I'm not just in the middle. Like, what you be doing? I'm like, bro, I'm like clean. I'm not like doing dishes, putting them in the dishwasher. I'm like, bro, it's going to be another 15 minutes. I can, <laughs> I can do multitask at this point. Sometimes I'll be talking like it's a bunch of people watching. I'll be like, y'all, I'm <laughs> out, y'all. Yeah, I talk it even if it's zero. <laughs> and I'll be like somebody gonna tune in at some point like what the hell is this motherfucker talking about <laughs> <laughs> that's how I start watching a lot of stuff where it's like what are they even talking about thinking something like Kai Sinat he's like one of the biggest Twitch people on there and he don't even have to play video games he just be standing there like but a lot of people are using Twitch as like a, a YouTube platform you know how you just get on and 
upload on, you know, <clears throat> but people are doing that with Twitch. So I think Twitch is trying to be the next YouTube, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Instead of it just being like gaming. But I'm like, that's going to be hard. Nobody's going to be able to top YouTube. Because <laughs> you're over there trying to compete with YouTube. I'll be playing Twitch and I'll be like, okay, I'll try this. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, I hope no one doesn't see this. Right. And I'm back at the game. I'll be dying. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to get this next time. Right. I've deleted some stuff. And some stuff, I'm like, I thought I deleted that. <laughs> Yeah, I deleted it one time. Oh I tried to do the Kobe challenge thing, and I sucked. So I was like, I'm getting off this. <laughs> and it's like always like, I don't know if it's bots or what. They'd be like, can you add me? I, I'm like, bro, stop hitting me up. Bro. I'm, like, I'm not going to add y'all ever. <laughs> and they're like, somebody started getting mad and was like, hey, do you hear? Do you see my messages? Like, no. <laughs> like, I don't like being on there. It's like creepy. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to have a good 50 good loyal followers, 50,000 loyal followers. Because who is this one person pissing me off right now? They say I got nine followers. I'm like, I don't even know half who the other is. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> Two, I know. <laughs> so I'm 50, right. 50. Me too. Like I know, like two people for mine. I'm like, who is where that? I guess maybe I'll I might share it in my basketball group. We doing teriyaki chicken and rice. I'm probably throw some broccoli in there. I'm probably gonna eat some ice cream. I should get started. <laughs> what you eat for dinner? Um, what did I eat? I ate some hot flamings with some Not turkey. Dinner? What? I'm selling Connie. <laughs> no, like, it's a turkey sandwich. It's a turkey sandwich, and then with chips, you know, hot flaming. That's all I had. Uh, like a hoagie. Like a hoagie sandwich. <laughs> I don't put the chips in there. Oh, I do sometimes. If it's Lay's, and it's like... If it's like a good Subway sandwich and you put like that Lay's chips in the, it's going to hit that crunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some people like the crunchiness of it. Bless you. But, yeah, I'm going to go. Um, Thanks for being on the show. I'm probably going to cut half of that out. <laughs> 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 like, what are y'all talking about? But, yeah. I think we're talking about other shows. <laughs> put this. Oh, did you see Bobcat Moretti yet or no? No, I haven't, but I saw it on the uh thing. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's like something about boxing. Yeah. I just wanna drive in the Audi. I wanna make a scream loudy. What the fuck they are?